Hey everyone, welcome to blackfilm.com Rewind with Ellen. I am your host, Ellen Wanjiro. And I'm our co-host, Roger Carter, and I'm in the wilderness of love. I love it. You are live from outside. Where are you? What's going on? Are those crickets I hear in the background? Those are crickets. I apologize, everybody. I, I really wanted to uh, immerse myself into nature. So I'm, <laughs> I wanted to come visit. Uh, I have a, I'm on PTO this week. So I decided to visit family up in Boston. So I'm hanging out in Boston, uh, having a good time. And uh, yeah, I'm here. Let's do nice. it. Nice, nice, okay. All right, so we uh, are featuring Nick Cannon's latest film, She Ball. Uh, it's a sports comedy drama written, produced, and directed by Nick Cannon. He is giving me very much Tyler Perry vibes. Um, and it's also exec executive produced by, your, your facial expression threw me off. It's also <laughs> executive produced by Brian Birdman Williams, a la Cash Money Films, and Chris Brown. Um, and fun fact, this film premiered uh, last year at a ton of film festivals. We're talking American Black Film Festival, Martha's Vineyard African American uh, Film Festival, the Pan-African Film Festival. And so it was officially released in theaters uh, and on demand on Amazon Prime on Friday, August 6th, as in last week. So this is um, uh, a new, new film. And so again, it's called She Ball and it follows Avery Watts, who's played by Nick Cannon, and um, he is a single father who lost his NBA dreams to gang violence. I love a good dream deferred storyline, and this is exactly that. Um, and so Avery struggles to keep his family community center open amidst, amidst rising gentrification in his Inglewood community. And so he joins forces with an unlikely ally Shelby Vandergun, played by Melody Ray, a white girl with serious basketball skills. Now, before I go on, Ro, you presented this film. What made you, first of all, did you watch it by the time you presented it to me? Like what made you kind of bring it to us to watch and talk about? Well, actually I got to thank Kevin Hart for that. Uh, okay. Kevin Hart put me on, uh, him and Snoop Dogg have been doing the Olympics on Peacock. And I was crying, laughing, so I was just going through Kevin Hart's stuff, and he he plugged this movie, and I was like, oh, mm -hmm. let, let's check it out. Let's see what happens. And so um, I went into the movie not expecting really it, not that much, but if Kevin Hart plugged it, I was like, okay, let me let me see. And, let's, and I decided, hey, I'll put you on, put Black Film on, let's see what's going on. Nice. So I do understand Kevin Hart plugging um, this film. Obviously, him and Nick Cannon are pretty close. He actually had it on his Instagram, too, in addition to talking about it on his show with Snoop. So, um, you know, I, I went into it, you know, not expecting like a cinematic masterpiece. Uh, <laughs> But there were a bunch of things that I did appreciate about this film. Uh, but before we, we dig into that, the cast, it's a heavy loaded cast in terms of the amount of notable names that are in it. I mean, we're talking not only is, is Birdman and, and Chris Brown executive producing the film, but they're also star in it. Um, and then Cedric the Entertainer, uh, DC Young Fly, who was hilarious in it, I thought. Evan Ross, Diana Ross's son. Uh, Faison Love, Lunell the Comedian. Um, Katie Aubert, and I loved seeing her. I remember her from, what was it, Friday and the old school movies, and I've always liked her and I loved her in this film. Marla Gibbs for crying out loud, um, and Melody Ray and Julia Manuel, and then Rebecca De Mornay. Like, I was like, "How? what is Rebecca's purpose in this film? But then now that I watched it, I fully understand. So I I actually enjoyed the underlying message in this film. Um, I thought it had some, some, some genuine comedic moments as well. I understand what Nick Cannon um, was trying to do with this, right? Going back to the whole, a dream deferred. Um, he was on his way to the NBA and then you know, he got derailed, just getting caught up in the streets protecting his sister and he ended up doing something he had no business doing and he served time. And so there goes the dream of being in an NBA. So now he's kind of tasked with um, 
for lack of a better word, uplifting his community, right? And this is a, a gang oriented community and all of that. And so he's he's tasked, he has a big task ahead of him. And so all these players um, in this film kind of feed the main purpose of, of this movie. And so he uh, he ends up losing the community center that he's coaching at. Um, and in order to kind of bring it back to life, he has this female, street female uh, basketball league. So then that takes a turn in terms of now it's a really, it's heavy female empowerment film. And so I didn't get that at first, but you know, that kind of comes in really quickly. What did, what did you think about that angle? Yeah, it was heavily female empowerment. Um, I, I mean, I, I appreciate that, right? A lot of times, yeah. so I was trying to think, when's the last time I saw a basketball movie, female basketball movie that was uh, very woman driven? I, I, it's been a bit I don't think I've ever seen it. Love and basketball is probably a lot, I mean, right? And that, it, was, even, that was more accent than but right. that was shared on screen. Uh, so it's been a minute. Sorry, that's a train. Um, so, oh, good. <laughs> sorry, guys. Uh, but, um, no, that part of it, that aspect of it, was was beautiful, and you know, I thought that was well done. And my the only thing I was nervous about uh, was it got real ballers out there. And so with the female part, they definitely got real ballers out there. Um, people don't know that Chris Brown could actually play. He almost could have got into the NBA. So to see him go, I would love to see the behind the scenes because there were some behind the scenes uh, after the movie. But to see if him and Chris Brown like really put some money down and say, hey, can I play? Because yeah. I don't know Nick, Nick got that handle like that. But it, it was just fun. And there was a huge message, message there that was being delivered. And a lot of times when people make it right out of the hood, that's it. They're not coming back. Mm -hmm. And so he had a chance to say, hey, you know what? I messed up but do I still want to live where I'm at or don't want to get out of here? And you're trying to change all the kids around him by saying, hey, man, give me that. Give me that piece. Give me that gun. Uh, you don't need to have that here. And that's a mentality that we still can't change. You know, you're having a good time. There's always that one, one stupid dude that kind of messes up for everybody else. So there's a lot of underlining messages. Also, you know, his daughter, that father-daughter connection, that was huge. That's a beautiful thing to see, like dads being there for their kids. Yeah. And a lot of times, you know, unfortunately... Uh, we see the other side of that in the, in the black community. So it was a very positive message there. To piggyback off the father-daughter um, connection, uh, you know, the fact that his character, Avery, did not have a relationship with his father. It was important to him to be there a thousand percent for his young daughter, who was also, you know, a baller, a young baller. She's like seven, eight years old. And, you know, she's a part of you know, his team like slash coaching. Um, so it was really cute to see that. And I and I love any depiction of a positive um, father-daughter or father-son uh, relationship in film. Um, and, it, and it felt authentic, right? So, you know, to, you know, to Nick Cannon's point of, you know, fathering up all these kids, I don't, you know, have any doubt in my mind that he is a great, father right like he is he, he strikes me as the type of dude that's pretty hands-on but anyway are we talk I, about that? huh are we gonna talk about that i mean we can we can we can okay um, I, I, after we're done with this <laughs> um so yeah so it wasn't any major surprise to see that hands-on relationship with the daughter um and so then going back to the to the female you know street basketball team like these were pretty like beautiful women who know how to play ball probably better than some dudes that I know. So that was pretty dope and unique to see. Like, yeah, there were moments where they got objectified um, <laughs> sexually just because that element needed to be in the film. But, you know, the women never paid any attention to that. That Their main goal was to play ball and to kick ass. And so that was an interesting um, perspective to, to to get to witness on um, in a film. Um, uh, back to Katie Arbor, she plays um, Avery's sister. Avery is Nick Cannon's uh, character. Um, and I loved her. There was something really unique about her performance. It was very um, natural. And I think this might be the most lines she's had in a film. And so yeah. I hope to see more of that because she's actually really good. Also, Melody Ray, who plays the white girl, um, 
who's also a, a baller, I thought she was good too. Like she came across very natural in that role. I believed her. Um, and while I don't, while this is my first time seeing her in anything, I, I, I dig her vibe. I, I, there's something about her that's, that's unique and authentic. I keep saying those two words. Um, and so I hope to see more of her. She's done some stuff in TV over the course of the last um, two decades, but I don't know if it's been anything major. So this could be a breakout role to some degree. I, I, def I think it definitely is a breakout role for her. Yes. Her chemistry with Nick on the screen, I was Ooh. like, is she another mom? Is she, <laughs> is she gonna be number eight? Number eight. Right. I, I don't know. Um, I was kind of upset because I was like, I hate when they do the black white, like that, uh, you white girl, you trying to do this, or you guy coming in here, you can leave and all that. But I love the message that was there, right? That was, uh, he just went on a tangent for like, like two. Like just, I, I love the tangent he went on. That's fine. Bah, 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 bah. Right. But there was a real conversation there, right? And so I hope people heard the message that was given there about yeah. what does, what consistently happens in these communities. And, you know, it also, to Cedric Entertainer's character, right? The councilman that comes in and oh. he has one objective. Oh, yeah, I want to help out the community. No, you're just trying to get your pockets laced. That's it. And so... Think about that. If we actually put money into communities in these neighborhoods and what would happen? Would there be less gangbangers on the street because they had a place to go? It, it, you know, peaceful environment where you don't have to worry about getting shot or, or, uh, or you know, getting killed. And you had somebody that actually you could talk to and you could learn something. And so that's that was the bigger message there. And I hope people got that. You know, maybe if, it, if anybody is like, how can I help communities? Like, stop putting your money to buy, to gentrify a community and start saying, hey, how can I invest in this building or this center for these kids where I can give back to them and keep the center there? Versus, oh, it's a plot of land. This could be some great housing here. This would be great for everybody. It's like, no, it's only great for a certain group of people. And so I think that's a bigger message that we have. And I'm glad they didn't do Cedric Entertainment as like a church guy. They did him as a councilman because I like it because that's the bigger message that the councilman's always in charge behind the scenes of what really goes down in these communities. And the church has a say or two, but they don't really control, hey, who's signing the checks and kind of doing that. So that was a good moment there. Yeah, the gentrification was a big uh, variable in this film. And I loved what, what they said at the beginning about development without displacement. Like gentrification doesn't have to be this negative. Um, it can be a positive as long as the people that are living in that community don't get displaced. So to your point, buy, you know, buy property, buy buildings, put money back into the community without kicking the inhabitants out of, of said community. So, um, yeah, a lot of underlying messages which kind of um, resonate in, in a way that you can't really hate on the film, even though you want to, you can't because of what it represents. Like I loved Nick Cannon's character. He was giving me vibes of, um, what is this, uh, the movie, the East Side um, High School, was it Lean On Me? Joe Clark, yeah. giving me that vibe. He, you know, just a, a, a genuine uh, man who wants to see his community grow in a positive way. And even him, you know, it, he, he ran this community center and he would make, you know, the, the people that would come in, some of them were gangbangers. You, you couldn't, you couldn't be in the community center with a piece. Like you had to give up your piece before coming into, um, into that center, into the basketball court. And so, you know, it, it's a positive character. It was a meaningful character, a meaningful movie. Um, and so, yeah, I enjoyed it for, for, for those reasons. I loved the relationship between him and Chris Brown's character, who, who was Taco. Taco was also like 90% in a gang, but then he had a lot of promise. He had a lot of potential. And Avery, Nick Cannon's character, saw that in him. So that speaks to, you know, how difficult it is to see greatness in someone, but they don't necessarily see it in themselves because of the circumstances that they're in. So now you're plagued with like, how do I get this kid to understand, you know, his future and, and the potential and the abilities that he has. And so that moment when they talk um, and Nick gets to share all that he does and then Taco finally, like the light bulb goes on in his head. Um, that was a pretty dope scene. Like it, it kind of warmed my heart there. And, I, and I'm not mad at Chris Brown's acting skills. No, Chris. Chris held it down. 
Acting yeah. wasn't bad. I mean, it, it was more bad basketball in some scenes, but, <laughs> right. but the, the acting was actually good. Actually, it was acting actually good. You know my rule. There's more than two rappers or singers in a, in a movie. And there was a, yeah, there, there was a bunch. But we were good. We were good here. We were good. <laughs> bunch. You know who I thought was dope? The chick that played um, Avery's girlfriend before Shelby stepped on the scene. Her, her court name was Fly. Yeah. Um, but but her real name is Tammy Bronner. Um, super cute. Like she was a beast on the court. Like I I was just like, oh wow. Um, yeah, hella skills. She was a former Harlem Grot Globe Trotter, a former Harlem Globe Trotter. So to your point earlier, these are women with legitimate basketball skills and experience in history. Um, that were highlighted in the, in this film, and so yeah, that was pretty. That was pretty dope. Um, what else? I mean, Evan Ross, Diana Ross's uh, son. He played Michael, um, who is on his way to becoming mayor. Or at least that's what he has his um, sight set on. And so I thought his character was interesting. I started off liking him, and then I ended up hating him. Right. And so he represents, you know, that that corrupt uh, person who really isn't about the community or isn't really about his relationship with Avery. Because the minute he got a chance to shit on Avery, he did. Um, read your so, contract, yeah. people. Don't just sign stuff. Read it. Have right. somebody read. I, to this day, people sign. Stuff. Right. Oh man, read your contracts. Uh, yeah, he he actually, you know, to piggyback on what you just said. Wow, breakout, and, and I kind of like that I can see him as a bad guy because he always played like this nice young kid. Yeah. And so now he's growing up into a man now and you see him, I was like, oh wow, he flipped the switch uh, on that scene. So I was like, okay, all right, all right. So like I said, across the board, the acting was solid. And that's the only thing I was really worried about uh, in this movie. <laughs> Again, that's the only thing I was worried about, but everybody is solid. It was it was just the ball for me. Some of the ball scenes were all right. I mean, even the um, Avery's young uh, seven, eight-year-old daughter, uh, her name is Julia Manuel, but her name is Magic in the film. She was dope. Like, like she needs her own show at this point. Um, she reminds so me of the she, daughter from Remember the Titans. Oh, yes. Yeah, I was like, oh, okay. Oh, yes. The same yeah. sort of like Rob Yeah. That's her name. yeah. Yeah, the same sort of gravitas and just ownership of her role. Like, she was probably better than 80% of the cast. In my <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't say that. That's, that's, I didn't say it. I didn't say it. No, but that, that, that's a lot of props to Julia Emanuel. Um, yeah, so this, this film is on Amazon Prime Video. Um, you can watch it for the low, low price of $6.99. <laughs> you can rent it. Um, I tell you, if it was twelve ninety nine, I don't know if we would watch it. <laughs> <laughs> well, to buy it, if you want to own it for your lifetime, you know, uh, it's twelve ninety nine. But we rented it. I don't know that I want to own it, but I am glad that I got to watch it. And so the last time Nick Cannon directed something was back in two thousand sixteen. So I'm glad to see him back behind the camera um, and also in front of the camera. And speaking of in front of the camera, he has a um, a daytime talk show that's supposed to debut in the fall of 2021. So we're going to be seeing a lot more of him um, come this fall, which should be interesting. I think pay for all the kids that he's having. I mean, <laughs> right. Or I mean, so let's, so let's quickly talk about that from a from from a male perspective. You know, what do you think about him fathering all these children? Someone asked me this question, and they and and I said financially, if you can do it, sure. There's, I have no problem with that. And if the here's a here, here's the problem, people. It's getting the women to be okay with it, and you covering the finance. If that can both go down, have fun, have fun, do, do what you got to do. But I also saw him in an interview, and supposedly he had some rare he had some rare disease. He has lupus. Yeah, 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 diagnosed, and so. His mindset is like, hey, I just want to live my best life and if I can help more and more. But I mean, he's got he's got money. So if he's creating more and more millionaires and you know, and billionaires and stuff like that, I love it for the culture, right? No? Not for the culture. Uh I mean, yeah. yeah for the, for the no, culture. no, no, you're right. 
brown and black kids that the next generation of brown and black kids are going to be more millionaires than we've seen in, in our in our lifetime as a, as kids growing up. We never had that. We had like a handful. It was more people like either on the corner or they were in the rap game or they were a baller. But now you're going to see these young kids coming up, um, black and brown, that are just that have money do their parents and just having 20 million kids is all good. My father has always instilled in me the importance of leaving behind a legacy, whatever that means to you. And so I understand Nick Cannon's um, frame of mind in terms of why not? I can afford it. Um, I uh, am leaving a lot of legacies uh, behind and what's wrong with that? Um, so, you know, the only question that comes up is, how do you divvy up your time to be yeah, yeah. there a hundred percent for each kid? Like, what does that look like? Yeah. Um, but I'm sure he's thought about that and it makes sense and it's going to work, especially if there's buy-in from all the mothers. And so, you know, I, I actually support the idea of um, not polygamy, <laughs> not polygamy, but living, um, living as a village and having multiple children and as long as you can take care of them i'm not opposed to that as long as the means to provide are available and will always be available and and based on how hard nick cannon has been working and will continue to work that could very well be the case i'm not speaking for ellen but nick i think you got another one i think you <laughs> It sounded like she was down. That's funny. That's funny. I mean, listen, I, I, I'm from Kenya, right? I'm from a place where having multiple wives and multiple children, it was not like far-fetched. It's not like this newfound, you know, way of thinking. It, it's possible. It's been done. It's worked. It just has to make sense for all parties involved. Blackfilms.com, guys. Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um I support I support whatever Nick Cannon does. He's not um he's not a stupid man. Like let's not underestimate no. Nick Cannon and where his mind is at and where it's going. Like this he again he is giving me Tyler Perry vibes in the best way. I feel like he is um not like hood Tyler Perry, but definitely a different sort of um, fraction of, of, of Tyler Perry, but on his way there. And you can't hate on that. He is a smart businessman. He has done so many things behind the scenes on the production end. Like, come on. Like, let's I, not. I need a drum line, too. I need a drum line, too. That's, that's all let's, I need. Let's I'm give in. me. Drum line, too. Come on. Let's give Nick Cannon his roses while he's still alive and, and, and you know, because that's the right thing to do. Anyway, um, any, la <laughs> any last words about this film? Check it out. Hey, what's your wifey <laughs> sitting down? Your hubby, have a good time. Don't bring your gun. So, right, Le leave your pieces at home. And again, DC Young Fly was really, really funny. Like he, he, he is, gave me those Chris Tucker vibes. Like he really embodied. Yeah. Like, like I was like, is that Chris Tucker? He's a new age Chris Tucker, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, check it out. Support, support the brother. Um, all right. So, all right. So tomorrow, which is August thirteenth, is a big movie premiere day. Respect comes out tomorrow in theaters, only in theaters. So we actually have to go to a movie theater. Um, I'm going, to, I, I can't wait to see this movie again. Yeah. Marlon, I can't wait. Wait. <laughs> can't wait. And I, I am going to see it again as well um, because we will be talking about it next week, August 19th. Um, so I cannot wait for that conversation. Um, and also Beckett, starring John David Washington premieres tomorrow, August 13th on Netflix. It's a really good film. Oh my God. 
um, I interviewed the director of um, the film. He's an Italian uh, director, Ferdi Filomarino. So uh, there were a lot of things that I was curious about um, director-wise uh, that I got a chance to ask him. So check out that interview on blackfilm.com. And so we'll be reviewing Beckett the week after that. Um, I forget what date that is, but just stay tuned for- The next week's show is just all dedicated to respect. I think because it, it should be. I think it's only right, and we need to dress up. Let's zhuzh it up a bit, whatever that means. Put some to respect us. on respect. You see what I'm saying? I'm saying some respect on saying? respect. Right. That's what we're gonna do, um, and I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. All right. So, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Ro, enjoy your time in Boston. When do you get back? Uh, Monday. Oh, nice. Lucky you. Okay. That's it. That's great. Right. Have a good time. All right. That's that's all we got, folks. Again, thank you for watching. We'll see you next Nick, time. Nick, hit Ellen up, please. Say, say that again? Nick, hit Ellen up. Stop it. I can't. No. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm not equipped for that. I'm not equipped. Okay. Next I'm not. Time, next time. <laughs> Goodbye, Rob. <laughs> <laughs>